All right, hey, this just arrived. I did not think that in 2022, an original boxed ASCII grip one-handed controller from 1997 could be gotten for as little as $10. Who knew? I always thought that this was a cool idea for a controller. Great for RPGs and simulation games, stuff that's not super fast moving. Um, but I never got one back in the day. I had a contact at ASCIIWare um, back in the 90s, and so I think I have a little soft spot for, for ASCII, and I always thought this was a neat idea. Maybe it's super stupid. I was really into the, the uh, all the TurboFire controllers that they had for PlayStation 1, even though they looked terrible. So anyways, this just arrived, and I cannot wait to open it up. The box is a, a little bent up. See, there's a little bit of a bend to it, but otherwise, I'm amazed that it's in such good condition. Now let's see if it's been repackaged or anything. This cardboard feels super tight still. Uh, it's definitely been rewrapped because that's a newer twisty tie. But, wow. Oh, I did not know it had a, like... Let's see if I can refocus up here a little bit. A rubberized grip on the bottom. Even though, does it say that on there? One piece, 360 degree directional disc. Feels pretty good. Square, or sorry, square, triangle. Huh. I thought it was like X circle, square, triangle, but X and circle are on the back. Wow. And then we got start, select, R1, R2, L1, L2. Let me get that as close as I can, and once the camera stops wobbling, I'll move this around a little bit. Wow. That is... That's awesome. I don't know, something about this makes me think of Super NES. I don't know why. It's not the same colors or buttons. Uh, this grip does not feel like it's super um, old, or like it's, you know, been sitting around in open air or something. Gotten really gross and fallen apart. Uh, the ferrite core has... Turn it the right direction. Made in Japan. Oh, now let me turn it back around this way. ASCII grip pad. PS1 plug. Man, everything feels super great about it, but I don't believe it would have just had a white twisty tie on it. This bag seems pretty, like, custom made for the size and length of it. Uh, does it have... Oh, it does. You know, maybe it is. Original folded warranty card. Favorite types of games. Systems that you currently own. My favorite video game system is an IBM PC. Uh, and then we got a little manual. Let me see if I can maybe set it up here. Make it a little bit bigger. Thank you for purchasing the ASCII grip. Please read this manual before attempting to use one-handed. Nice. This is the arrangement when the product is purchased. Standard arrangement. Function number one. Can be arranged for the following three choices. After you have changed an arrangement, it stays that way. Whoa. Hold the select and start buttons down simultaneously while turning on the PlayStation. Whoa. Arrangement one. Arrangement two is circle and X on the top buttons. Special button one, special button two. This arrangement allows you to use the programmable buttons. Programmable buttons! Cannot memorize the directional pad or other programmable buttons. Even when the button arrangement is changed, the settings for programmable button one and two are maintained when arrangement three is resumed. Wow. Back buttons, which are circle and X in the standard arrangement, become programmable buttons and... Oh, button one and two. What can they be? 
set program button one to press the circle button and X button simultaneously. Oh, so like you can't reach both of them. So this would be two buttons. Neat. PlayStation game software lets you configure keys any way you want. Compatible software will include the corresponding marks. Please look for them. Connection method. Please plug in where it plugs in. Caution. Don't play with the cable. It's dangerous. Don't take it apart. ASCII grip is precision equipment. Do not handle it roughly. Cool. Well, that's awesome. This thing looks great, and uh, hopefully I'm going to edit this in with some other gameplay of a couple different games. So here we are in the first RPG that I could grab for the ASCII Grip controller. Uh, Lunar Silver Star Story Complete. Unfortunately, I don't have a memory card right now with a save farther in the game, so we're here right at the very beginning. Uh, but you can see, moving around, the D-pad is actually pretty comfortable to use. Um, square is uh, to get into menus, and then X on the back is confirm. Circle is back to exit to go back. Um, and that's about it so far. Oh, select will also bring up the menu. Oh, everything will back out of the menu. Um, so it's pretty... Can't give that to Null. It's a little weird navigating, like, uh, pressing here for confirm and then having to, like, slide up in a weird way that isn't quite like L1, L2, like the regular PlayStation shoulder buttons. Um, it's kind of a weird movement to reach up and hit the circle button. I almost wish these two were side by side. So you were like hitting here for X, hitting here for circle. Um, that's the only thing that's like kind of uncomfortable, but it's maybe because I'm holding this up in front of a camera, having it down like on my lap. It's, uh, it's a little easier to reach to just, you know, lean up and hit circle. So let's try something else. Here we go. Hogs of War. And uh, you do have a timer in this game. You know, it's basically Worms, but in 3D. Um, yeah, you're going to get shot. I'm pretty sure you're going to get shot. Um, it's a little weird. Circle is bring up the menu. So you have that weird kind of reach again. Uh, let's see, what was it? Square is jump. Oh, uh, L1 is a look, I think. Yeah, okay, it'll let you look. Uh, that's a weird reach. You kind of need two hands for that. And that's the only other buttons we've got. <laughs> I jump. Let's just go ahead and shoot this guy. I think. There we go. So, sitting back... Can I do anything on this screen? No. Okay. Let's see if he hits this tree again. He usually hits this tree. Uh-oh. Oh! Nice shot, AI. Um, just sitting back, um, it's it's pretty comfortable. Uh, holding it upright for the video is a, a little extra uncomfortable, but you you, know, you can sit and let your arm hang, and it's a little easier to hit buttons and stuff. So, uh oh, man, the computer is good. Let's get one. Let's let's kill off one pig here. And then I'll jump to something a little more action-y, maybe. Let's see how action goes. Rip. Alright, Intelligent Cube. Puzzle game, but a uh, action-oriented puzzle game. 
Uh, fortunately, X is the button to place the bombs. So that's kind of natural. Triangle is detonate. And L1 and R1 kind of rotate the camera back and forth. It is a little weird oh, having X on... Uh, uh oh Having X behind the D-pad. And I guess, actually, it, it's a little weird using the D-pad with my right finger. Let me see how I do left-handed here. Like, where I would normally be... Oh, yeah, that's... Oops. Oh, no. This is a little weird playing everything around, um, like, looking at the screen around my phone and around my hand here. To try and keep this in frame. And one, one thing I was thinking about starting playing some games with this is that it really is an ambidextrous controller. Everything is uniform and it can be reached you can you can reach and feel everything from both sides like equally from both sides let's leave that guy there no what's my iq like 80. my favorite part. Oh! Oops, I missed one. It is still a little funky uh, getting used to having my left thumb be the D-pad, but also the buttons up here that are, are normally would be, you know, my right thumb hitting X, square, circle, and triangle. Let's see if I can sneak another one in. Nope! Didn't make it. Reflexes uh, take a little bit of practice for this controller. Whoop. Yeah, that is a little funky. All right. Let's take a look at something a little more action-oriented. Here we are with Bust a Move. You'll see I just hit the square button for the X button because as I turned on the PlayStation, I held select to put it into configuration two, which makes this, uh, squ the pink square button is X, the triangle button is circle back the i think circle buttons become square and then x becomes triangle um i was not having any luck playing this game i'm fairly accomplished at bust a move the dancing game not the puzzle game um on a regular controller and having circle and x back here as they're naturally mapped was really throwing me off so I think I'll do better here. Let's see how I do holding the controller up. I'm going to shut up because I need to count inside my head. Mess that one up.
That was the uh, circle button, I think it's square. Try left-handed. Not so much better. No, not any better. All right, well, <laughs> that's bust a move, or bust a groove. Uh, totally playable on this thing. Um, like everything else so far, would take some practice to get used to it. And actually holding it up like this is kind of really killing my wrist. Um, holding it down in my lap would be great. And the other thing that would be awesome is if the cord came out of the top. Um, it wouldn't be great for holding it up here for the video, but just down in your lap, if you were just holding it like this and the cord, the weight kind of pulled off the top of it, or not at all, if it's, you know, dangling on the ground. Uh, I think it would just feel a lot better because right now in my lap it's like the cord's already like pinched up here up this way um anyways next game let's try something even more actiony after bust a groove i have held start and select while the playstation turns on to reset this back to configuration one so we're back on x and circle square triangle like it should be Oh, fading. Stylish fade to get back to the title screen for Einhander. Let's see how this goes. I'm not sure which button I'm gonna have to hold down to fire. I hope it's X. You know what, I'm gonna try this left-handed because that's what I would be moving the D-pad with. Oh no. Oh, oh, it's this one. Well, that's not gonna work. Okay. <laughs> Let's try this real quick. So this will be a fail. Oh god, what one is it? Okay, so, uh... Sheesh. So, oh, circle. Circle is back here to move your weapons around. X is fire your second weapon. Definitely you need two hands for Einhander. The shoulder buttons do other stuff. Oh yeah, increase your speed. Ugh. Yeah, the the Einhander is not a a one-hander game. Okay. All right. Uh, down, down, thumbs down on that one. Let's try uh, one more PS1 game. All right, I thought Jumping Flash might be interesting. I, I think Jump is on X, so we might be able to do this first-person game. First-person 3D platformer. With one hand. Yeah! Eat it, nice frog. Oh, am I getting too far out of frame here? I don't know that I want to play the entire game this way. <laughs> or uh, many of the later levels. Okay, now we gotta get up there. Hey. I don't want the bonus game. I guess I can hold it over here. Uh, let's see. Yeah, all right. So the other buttons would be... Uh, oh, it's a uh, hold, isn't it? Yeah, these are... Wait. It's just R2. R2 is hold to look up and down. So that won't work so well. Uh, what are other buttons? Triangle square is fire, which is going to be kind of hard to do while you're moving. Uh, jump is X. Circle is use whatever sub-weapon you have, so that's doable. 
Um, if these were flipped, so if we did configuration two, no, you, you wouldn't be able to jump on one of those two buttons. You really need to jump right here. So for all the levels where, where you can get by just jumping on things, this would be fine, but I don't think it's going to work for the majority of this game. Because there are parts where you definitely need to be able to shoot and move at the same time. Yikes. That's quite a lot. Uh, oh, and there was still one more, huh? Alright, All right, first stage of Jumping Flash. Thumbs up with the ASCII <laughs> one-handed controller. Uh, that'll do it for PS1. Uh, let's try out some PlayStation 2 stuff and see how it goes. All right, let's take a look at some PS2 stuff. Uh, because a lot of PlayStation 2 stuff used analog control, so... I already tried this one, and it's a pretty hilarious result. Is navigating the menus okay? I was like, okay, all right, this will work. This could work. i completely forgetting how um, City Crisis plays. All right, loading. Okay. Push any button. All right, we're ready to save some people. And... Begin. Oh, no! 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 Go, man! Save yourself! Get down there! Save... Save yourself. <laughs> oh. Aw, oh, it, it's a no on, uh, on City Crisis. But I did find out in the course of recording this that there is a PlayStation 2 ASCII grip one-handed controller. It is extremely more expensive than this thing was for PlayStation 1, so I unfortunately will not be checking that out, but let's check out a couple more PS2 games, though. If it's T and E soft, it can only be one kind of game. Well, one of two kinds of games. It's either High Blood or it's Golf. And this happens to be Disney Golf. I've turned the volume all the way down. <laughs> Because I'll never be able to post this anywhere. Also, uh, Donald's idle animation is uh, extremely repetitive. Uh, this was one of the first ones I actually tried out after I set up the PlayStation 2. Um, it actually works, like, totally fine, as you'd expect for a golf game. There's, uh, you know, not a whole lot of quick reaction that you need. It actually feels pretty good to use the button on the back for hitting the power marks. Sorry about the complete silence, but there's a lot of Disney-branded music in this. Um, so triangle cycles through your views. Square, I don't think, does anything. Up and down changes the power. The front shoulder buttons cycle or L1 and R1 cycle your clubs. I don't know if L2 and R2 do anything. And circle backs out of selections. So let's uh, use the putter from here, uh, 387 feet away. I think that's Mickey saying, don't try to smash the ball. Don't tell me how to golf. Don't tell Donald how to golf. And, oh, right, we got all the backspin on it. All right. And... Ooh, I messed that up. Ooh! All right, well, that's Disney Golf. Uh, you could imagine that just about any golf game would probably work okay with the control scheme of the grip controller as long as it supports um, analog or digital uh, d-pad for aiming and moving around that might be the one thing you run into so let's take a look at something else 
Hey everybody, it's Flipnik. Everybody's favorite fantasy pinball game. Not fantasy-themed pinball game, but fantastical pinball game. There's just no more stylish way to start pinball than that. All right, let's see. D-pad is activating some of the things, so I imagine that's a bumper. Eventually, we'll get to the playfield where I can see... Oh, yikes. Oh, hold on. <laughs> it's going great so far. Not the greatest. It's uh, left on the D-pad and circle, which is the one that's kind of hard to reach. Uh, and then as we saw, the shoulder buttons are tilt, so you don't want to wail on those too much. I'm going to switch hands here. Multiball already. Have a fantastic time with your multiball. It's your chance for a big bonus at work. You know what, can we change the buttons? Uh, no. This is not the most enjoyable way to hit the flippers on a pinball game. It does allow you to do it one-handed. But uh, that's just not too enjoyable, hitting circle back here and, oh no! A big UFO is coming. And left on the D-pad. Not my favorite. And does not seem to be configurable. Unless it's configurable outside of the game. Let's take a look at the menus real quick and see if you could configure Flipnik. No, I think I'm alright not saving. Oh, Triangle is back. Oh, you are not allowed to reconfigure. You'd be at the mercy of the programmable buttons on this thing if you wanted to try and make, like, left and right flipper or something. Uh, not a not a great win on Flipnik. And last up on PlayStation 2 is Mobile Light Force 2, or Shikigami no Shiro. I think this will work. I assumed it would just be holding a button down to shoot and moving with the D-pad. It's been a while since I played it. Yeah, this is the way to play. Right, right-handed with your right, <laughs> right thumb on the D-pad, holding down the uh, like alternate fire mode where you move slower. It's only gonna get me shot immediately. Yep, 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 yep. There we go. Let's try left-handed. Uh-oh. Now we're in trouble. Hey, if you've never seen any of my old videos where I play a shooter, I'm very bad at them. So you're in for a real treat here, a real professional show. Actually, you know what? This time I'm just going to blame it on the controller. Uh, let's see, is Circle the regular attack? Nope, nope, Circle's a bomb. Okay, you'd have to keep wailing on this button if you want the regular fire, and that's not gonna happen. If I could do this two-handed, totally defeats the purpose. It's also hard to move around on the the D-pad. All right, well, that's it. Let's wrap this up. In an alternate universe, the grip controller reinvented how we play games. Using it now, you can just barely feel how the one-handed layout could have changed things. But by the time it launched in 1997, we were already pushing into analog controls and not thinking about a casual gameplay experience. 
I think it's a great option for players with disability or mobility needs, though. The alternate and programmable configurations help overcome some of the issues with button placement, even if it's a little clunky to change the layout back and forth. I won't be using the grip for any kind of regular play, but I'm happy to finally own one, and in such great condition. It's worth picking up for anyone who appreciates a good weird controller, and it's much more affordable for a lark than its PlayStation 2 successor is. Thanks for watching.